In this video, I will try to explain what is a control problem and how to solve it. A control problem is constituted by sensors and actuators. Here the actuator is the servo motor, while there is a sensor at the bottom which will measure the distance of the cube, and this value will be our reference set point. Then we have another sensor at the top, in charge of measuring the distance of the card, and this value will be our output variable. Our goal is to make the output variable reach the same value of the set point. That is, I want the card to be at the same distance of the cube. So, if I move the cube, the card has to follow it. Now, let's suppose that at the beginning the cube is at 30 cm and our card is at 10 cm. So, in this case, there is an error of 20 cm and our goal is to drive to zero this error. In order to do that, we will use a PID algorithm, that is an algorithm that at each instant computes what is the right value the actuator has to apply to make the output variable reach the reference set point. So in this case, the PID algorithm will compute how many degrees we will have to turn the servo motor to make the cart reach the desired position. the PID algorithm is very easy to implement. So at the beginning we specify the limits of the control variable. That is, our servo motor can move between minus 66 and plus 66 degrees. Then we define the sampling time, that is, the time our microcontroller needs to complete an entire loop. Then we define some variables, the set point, the output variable, the three components of the PID algorithm and the control variable U. Here we have the most important part of the PID algorithm because these values are tunable. It means that you can modify them and by modifying them you change the dynamic behavior of your system. And at the beginning you can guess them. Otherwise, if you are a control engineer, you can select them with a mathematical approach. So now we came to the loop. We start by measuring the set point, that is the distance of the cube, and we have to filter it because measurements are often noisy. And we create this measurement by taking a percentage of the current measurement and a percentage of the previous measurement. Then we measure the output variable, that is the distance of the cart, and we filter it too for the same reason. So finally we can compute the error as the difference between the output variable and the set point. And now we can start by computing the three components of the PID algorithm. The proportional action, that is a constant times the error. So the greater is the error, the greater will be the proportional action. Then if we are not in the saturation zone, that is we are inside the admissible limits of our control variable, we compute the integral action. Then we can compute also the derivative action and I decided to compute it on the output and not on the error. 
and I filtered it because it was very spiky. Finally, we can compute the total control action as the sum of the PID actions. So now, if we are outside the admissible limits of the control variable, we have to limit the control variable to the admissible value. That is, if u is 80 degrees, we have to limit it to 60 degrees because our servo motor can't move to 80 degrees. So then I transform the value of the control variable from radians to degrees. And I continue this whole procedure until there is an error greater than 2 centimeters or until the control action is greater than a given threshold. So that's all. With this easy PID algorithm, you can control lots of situations in an easy and affordable way.